Welcome, Fyra. Hi, nice to be here. Fyra is going to be one of our 32 authors at the Holiday Book Festival coming up in November. It's the 30th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Kensington Mill Falls Events in Milford, Michigan. So excited to see you. Uh, looking at your bio and the registration form that you filled out, you have three book titles. Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. Uh, and you're in the fantasy, romance, sci-fi with teen and young adults? Yes, Please. that would be correct. Yeah. Um, I have two books in um, a series called The Phoenix Chronicles that are YA and uh, new adult fantasy fiction. And then I have a third that is dystopian science fiction. And there are um, romantic subplots in all of the works. So, yeah. Very neat. So tell me about, so Crimson Araya is, Aria, Aria okay, yeah. um, is entered into the book cover contest. Tell it us is. about that and show us so, the cover. Yeah. So this is the cover Ooh. doing these of Crimson Aria. You can see that there's kind of a fiery being up here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Beneath it is the main character. And so I picked this moment from the book where she was um, uh, just kind of uh, um, down and kind of worried and happens to be alone and um, uh, the rain starts to fall and that kind of creature is her um, kind of metaphysical phoenix that's kind of protecting her from the rain. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was pretty striking of a cover and I think the cover artist uh, Scarlett Payne did a really great job on it. Mm -hmm. So That was the one I chose to enter. So tell us more about the story. So I take mythological creatures that you know of um, particularly in this series, the lead has the powers of a phoenix. I give um, their abilities to people and just kind of let them loose in a city for adventure and mayhem. Um, so again, the female lead has the powers of a phoenix. The male lead has the powers of a dragon, but there's also a unicorn that likes to mess things up and a leprechaun, <laughs> you know, who could be a lucky or unlucky depending on, <laughs> on the day. Um, there's a, a person that has the powers of a griffin. Um, so all of them just kind of act like uh, pseudo superheroes, but superheroes connected to the mythological creatures that you already know of and are familiar yeah. with. Yeah. So um, uh, the book centers around Anne Smith, who is the Phoenix, and I called it Crimson Aria because I, I don't know if you can see, but I kind of have a, a piano back here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was my first love. Um, and my first degree was in music education. And an aria is um, just a solo uh, operatic song. So, okay. So um, in this, she makes a lot of her decisions by herself. Um, she kind of has to be self-reliant and grow as a person in that way through her character development. And so I thought that that was a nice, um, both a shout out to mm -hmm. my music degree and a nice, uh, nice title. Aria is a pretty popular name given some other series. <laughs> so yeah, pretty catchy. Awesome. Now tell us about your other two books. Um, so the next book in this series is Amber Rhapsody. Again, a rhapsody is a, um, a type of uh, musical uh, mm -hmm. genre that you can write in. Um, and it follows the same characters. Um, she has her first ascension. So her first flame in the color spectrum is red. And each time she ascends, she um, uh, gets a brighter flame with more powers. And so in book two... She ascends and gets an orange flame, hence the title Amber Rhapsody. There's not a lot of good words for orange. <laughs> Just going to put that out there. <laughs> Amber worked. <laughs> um, and uh, that one's more, that one's less of a mystery, you know, because they kind of have figured out um, uh, what happened to them and where they're going and more gets more into adventure and superhero yeah. hijinks and kind of develops uh, the unseen world. Um, oh, okay. So, 
Yeah, and that's Amber Rhapsody. And then my other book project, Red. <laughs> you may be sensing a color theme here. <laughs> um, I think you're in a certain corner yeah. of the color wheel. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Project Red is uh, the dystopian science fiction novel that I have out and it will also be part of a series. It's in the same universe, but set 150 years after the events of the Phoenix Chronicles. So it's related, um, but it has a different cast of characters with some cameos of some mythics that are still alive. Um, and the reason that it's color coded um, is because I did it so that you could either read them chronologically or in tandem Ooh. by color. So um, looking forward to releasing the orange book of that series by December and book three will be the yellow book of this one um, in about January. So I have two more coming out. Nice. So you've got the two coming out. Do you have more plans after those two? Oh yeah, um, both both series will be about seven books long by the time. Oh, wow. my outlining is is accurate. <laughs> so you're a plotter then. I, I, I feel like I have moments where I plot and moments where I fly by the seat of my pants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just okay. Kind of depends on the mood, the day, and what I'm trying to accomplish. So you're not in one particular camp or the other. <laughs> no, no, I'm one of those, those people that like to switch around. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Awesome. <laughs> so you mentioned about your music degree. I did, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... You teach music lessons then? I do. I teach private piano lessons, uh, beginning guitar and voice lessons, as well as wow. I can teach um, a lot of uh, beginning instruments. Like uh, sometimes if if a kid isn't just getting the saxophone to sound, they'll come to me for a lesson or two and I okay. help. You know, um, so I work with my uh, small town community, just trying to, you know, make sure that the kiddos are set in any way that I can. <laughs> so. Um, I did work in a classroom uh, for a little while, um, but uh, I just, I, your immune system is supposed to kind of even out with kiddos after mm -hmm. about four years of teaching and mine just did not. Um, oh. so it became unhealthy to continue in the classroom, but I'm finding that private lessons are working really well. Yeah. Um, and in fact, at the back of Project Red is mm -hmm. a little, um, uh, a little song based on kind of a limerick that I put in that I wrote myself. So oh, nice. for, for anyone that uh, can read music and picks up my book. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll have all three, you'll have three titles at the November event. I will paperback and hardcover. Yep. Ooh, hardcover too. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I love it. Um, now, you've got a Siberian Husky. I do. Tell um, us about him. So she is, um, I don't know. Here, let me see if I can turn it. She's right over there. <laughs> <laughs> she looks very relaxed. She Guardians is. She's a chewy box, by the way. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Such a good company. Uh, yeah, I kind of wore her out before the interview, so she'd be nice and Nice and relaxed. <laughs> He's a husky. <laughs> super intelligent breed, super affectionate, but you gotta you gotta keep him on task and give him a job for sure. Awesome. So are you so you live in Michigan? Are you originally from Michigan? I am. Um, I was born and raised here. Um, I moved away to Arizona for about seven years and then moved back. Moved back from Arizona. Yeah, I did. Um, I brought, I brought my uh, now ex husband at, at the time, my fiance, with me, and uh, back to my little small town. And yeah, um, still here. So, <laughs> <laughs> what area of Michigan are you from? Um, I, between Lapeer and Port Huron on sixteen oh, nine, okay. little towns off of the highway. So. Yeah, there's a lot of little towns out that way that are so neat. There is, and they all have their own character, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just interesting kind of to kind of drive through those little towns and see what's happening. So, I was actually at the Yale Bologna Festival 
I don't know if you know what that is, but yes, uh, I do. <laughs> that was that was a riot watching them throw baloney. <laughs> yeah, great. I had actually lived in the little town of Matamora for a few. Oh, years. okay, gotcha. And, I, and my kid, my kiddos went to Lapeer schools, so okay. Yeah. And I had done volunteer that. work in the school. So I understand about immune systems with those kids because it's yeah. like, oof. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Props to the teachers that continue to work with kids and can do it with a healthy immune system. They are incredible people. So. Oh, yeah. Because those elementary kids, and that was the age group that I worked with. Mm -hmm. we, they were all full of germs. So. <laughs> well, but they are. Totally shared. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, I am looking forward to meeting you in person in November. I'm very excited and I'm grateful that I could be part of this event. So. Well, we've got 31 authors that will be joining you. So we have a huge variety of genres and authors and book titles. Wonder. So it's going to be a great fun time. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Well, I will see you in November. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs>